All right, everybody, I have got Rick Eisenzimmer here, and I'm really excited about this video. Here we've got not only the owner of Grumpy's Diesel, but the Grumpy car behind him right there. It's a, uh, what year Nova is it? It's a 1968 uh, Chevy Nova. Um, total investment, I don't want to talk about that, but <laughs> I did buy the car for $25 28 years ago. Uh, obviously it has transformed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, it's an ongoing project. Right, right. So this is the, this car, because of its attitude, because of its sound, we, was the foundation for that's, Grumpy's Diesel. That's where it all came from. Okay. Back, back when, uh, I first started racing it, it, um, everybody kind of put a name on the car and, and I thought, you know, this thing just drives me insane. Uh, this breaks, that breaks. <laughs> I can't make it do what I want to. It's grumpy. The car is grumpy. <laughs> and I guess my attitude kind of stuck with it too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, no so, one would ever say that about no, you, Rick. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so it was a good name for me. It, it was a good persona. Um, uh, people remembered me by it. Uh, Eisen Zimmer is a bad name to remember <laughs> and spell. So, hey, there's Grumpy, you know? <laughs> All right. Uh, and when it came time for business, um, I didn't want, uh, uh, Florida's finest truck repair, or <laughs> something crazy like that. And I actually made up some business cards and, and, uh, I said, hmm. Uh, and one of them was Grumpy's Diesel. And I'd watch their faces. And when they got to that one, they'd laugh or giggle or, or that's the one I knew I was home. That's it. That's it. That's it. I like it. Yep. Um, so what does Grumpy's Diesel do? We, for those that don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty simple. We work on uh, light duty. Um, so we're talking about uh, F-250, 2500, Chevy Dodge, Ford, mm -hmm. um, uh, some Mercedes, like in the Sprinter lines. Yeah. Um, don't do any Volkswagen, sorry. <laughs> um, but we're, our mainstay is, um, the stuff that you use to pull your camper, your boat, yeah. uh, race cars, uh, or if you just like a diesel truck, yeah. um, that, and, and it's pretty much bumper to bumper. Um, we stay away from internal transmission work because that's highly specialized. So, uh, but anything else, window motors, starter, batteries, uh, no tires. So, <laughs> no tires. Okay. No. How'd you get into this? <sighs> well, I, I'd like to say I was born for it, but uh, honestly, um, I always had a mechanical aptitude. Uh, didn't do real good in school. Uh, I was supposed to be a contractor. Um, my stepdad, my grandfather, owned a contracting business and uh, I took drafting and and all that stuff all the way through high school and I knew what I was going to be. Um, and in the 80s, uh, the economy went really bad and they closed their business and I said, well, what the heck am I going to do now? Huh. Um, I'll take shop. Okay. So I, I started messing with cars and it progressed to the point where well, uh, if I'm going to fix all my buddies' cars, I might as well get paid for it. So instead of working at Burger King or McDonald's, I work changing oil. And, yeah. you know, it progressed to the point where I kind of knew what I was doing. And mm -hmm. school came along and, and helped me teach the craft and, and then just practice. Okay. You know? So. Uh, that's how it happens. <laughs> so has it? So it's been since high school that you've been mechanicing? Nah, or, uh... Yeah, pretty much. Well, I, I mean, even as a grade school kid, uh, bicycles. If it was mechanical, I was messing with it. Okay. Uh, my mom tells a story that there was uh, uh, my grandparents had a cuckoo clock on the wall, and uh, I remember doing it. I just had to know how that thing worked. I took the back of it apart. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I can't put this thing back together. And I wadded everything up, put it back in and hung it on the wall and hope for the best. And so, yeah, it, it's always been, a. uh, I want to know how that works. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so tell me more about Grumpy's. How long has that been open? We have been open. For, we're going on nine years now. Okay. Um, uh, and and it's progressed. You know, um, um, in the beginning, it was me. Um, right. I, I, it was me. Uh, that that's all there was to it. Saturday, Sunday, um, you'd find me in the shop working on somebody's vehicle. Um, once I got busy enough, then um, I hired a, a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and and uh, he was uh, wanting some extra money, and uh, he came to work, and it went on and on from there. Okay, but you were already working some. You said just weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I I took a job at the Ford dealership. Okay. Um, I I I had this attitude that that uh, only the best mechanics work at the dealership, and I stayed away from dealership for a long, long time. And I found myself looking for a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had been uh, working at a tune-up place, at an oil change place, at a muffler, uh, bending uh, pipe for mufflers, yeah. you know, all that stuff. And I, I just needed a job. And Ford dealership came knocking. I had a, a mutual friend and it's like, man, I, I don't like Ford. And I don't know if I can work at a dealership. I'm not good enough for that. Yeah. Well, I I needed the job, so I took it, <laughs> and and uh, I learned that uh, uh, there's all kinds of people at the dealership, and and some good, <laughs> some not so good, and 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 I learned quickly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, with the help of them training me, uh, I got pretty good at it. And and the nice thing about dealerships is it's repetition. You're yeah. working on the same thing over and over again, so you yeah. get pretty good at what you do. Right. So, so that you were doing that, and then, but to take some extra side money, you started yeah. working some on the side. Well, well recession hit, okay. and and at first, man, I'm making plenty of money, um, eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year. Um, I don't need a, a second job, you know. But recession hit, and time and, out. Okay. You said that you you were making. Eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. turning wrenches. Yeah, America needs to hear that right there. <laughs> it, that you can make a good living. Absolutely, in absolutely, the trades. Absolutely, uh, yeah. and I'm not saying all mechanics make that. No, no, but, I understand that. Uh, but, but, uh, but there I, is I the possibility t- for making a good yeah, living. Yeah, two of my partners were making the same kind of money I was. Yeah. And I, I have friends that worked at Chevy dealerships and stuff. <clears throat> now I don't know about today. Things mm-hmm. change in the industry, yeah. but I was making yeah. good money. Yeah, the recession hit, economy took a dump, and the dealership cut us back. They rolled our pay back. They wow. uh, they did a lot. They took a lot of things away from us, and I was in the position where I wanted to make this much money, and I had. Honestly, I, I, I was stressed out. Uh, I had uh, car payments. I had mm-hmm. two or three car payments, house payments that I had to live up to. Um, I had a style of living, and and I couldn't make those because they cut back on. I wasn't good at planning ahead. It's yeah. my fault. Yeah. So, so I, I said, well, all I got to do is take a little side work, and I set my little shop up in the backyard and... I'd work on one or two vehicles at a time and supplement my income. Yeah, um, and it it worked pretty good. Um, and then I, I kind of went into a burnout. I couldn't hmm. stand. I, I mean, when you're working in your backyard, you get people calling you on Sunday night at ten o'clock, stopping by your house. Uh, you have no privacy anymore. Oh, so dear. so I quit doing that. I, yeah. I put a stop to it. I'm, I'm not doing this. And I quit my dealership job and went to another dealership that promised me more money. Okay. And I thought, okay, things are going to change. It's this dealership's fault that I wasn't making this much money. And then I realized it was a bigger picture. Uh, yeah. Dealerships are difficult. They're thinking about them. You're a number. Um, so, uh, that dealership was in Mobile and, 
um, again, I just, uh, the, the business wasn't there. They were paying me, uh, 30 bucks an hour. But if the truck isn't there, uh, you're not making the money. Hmm. So we were standing around looking at each other going, hope the next job comes in. Wow. So I was driving to Mobile every day from Pensacola and I'd sit there for two, three hours looking at the walls. Oh man. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm spending money and not making any. So here I am back again. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to working on, uh, side jobs. So I did it a little different. I rented a small, uh, garage, uh, close to my house. Okay. And that way I could get away from home and go to that job. Nobody knew where I lived. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's what I did. <laughs> and then it started getting to the point where, Hey, um, I'm pretty busy and I have no home life anymore. And, uh, January, February rolls around. I'm doing my, uh, income tax and I'm filling everything out and I'm thinking, man, do I have to record this money? Do I have to, you know, I, and, it, and it was pretty substantial. So I, I was reading all the bylaws and all that stuff, trying to do my own taxes. And it said, if you do after hours, what you do during the day, that is a business that, that is deemed a business by the IRS. Yeah. So I thought I'm in business and I just didn't know it. Uh, uh, you know, and, wow. and I, I, I remember sitting in my chair going, wow, I, I have a business. I just didn't know I had a business. Right. So I went down and filed for my, um, business license. Right. And did the legal stuff. And, and, um, it was just going to be me. That way, if I did get audited, mm -hmm. I could keep the books and I got my sales tax number and I was above board with the dealership. I told them what I was doing. They go, yeah, you're over in Pensacola. Don't worry about it. You're okay. not going to hurt our business. Well, it got to the point where, uh, I was so busy that, um, uh, and I wasn't at work during the day that I went to my boss and I said, Hey, look, we're not doing a whole lot. And Fridays, uh, are really busy for me. How about if I take off Fridays until the business comes back to the dealership. Yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead. I thought, <laughs> wow, that went over really easy, you know? So I, I come back the next day and he goes, hey, Rick, I got to talk to you. Uh, we got thinking, no, it's one or the other. I said, all right, it's going to be the other. So I quit my job. Abaddon. Um, my wife wasn't happy about it. Um, she wanted stability yeah. and we had already been through all the financial woes. I actually lost a home, uh, during that time, wow. um, uh, paid off all my debts eventually, but I did lose my home. Um, so when I called her and said, Hey, guess what I did today? I quit my job. She wasn't too happy about it, but, um, I went to work Monday morning with a few vehicles sitting there and I had 2,500 bucks in the bank. And I said, I've got a month to make my bills. And through that month, I made seven, eight thousand dollars and I paid my bills and I thought, I made it. I, 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 I'm doing good. How, how did you get those other people in the door? I called every person in my phone book, in my cell phone, and I did it on the way home from the dealership. After I quit, I called, every, I went A, B, C, D, uh, everybody on the way home to Pensacola. And I, and there were some people that I knew, mm -hmm. some not so well, and I said, hey, uh, I quit my job. I'm going to be doing it on my own. If you need anything, give me a call. And a few of them did. Okay. Uh, one or two, three or four, got some references. Hey, my buddy's going to be doing this. Um, uh, sent them to me. And, and, um, like I said, I made my, my, uh, rent payment, my car payments, all that. Yeah. I made enough yeah. that I broke even that month. 
you know, whatever it was. Yeah. And the next month, um, I did 12, 13,000. And the month after, uh, 15, 18,000. And I was still doing it all on my own. Um, wow. I, I, I had to close for lunchtime. Um, uh, I ran, got parts, you know, uh, I'd, <laughs> I'd go to Walmart and buy oil filters and oil so I could keep them on the on the shelf but I mm -hmm. can only spend so much money uh, yeah. to keep that stuff and I set up accounts with a couple of vendors that at the end of the week I'd write them a check okay and little by little it got bigger 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 well it got to the point where I I couldn't do it myself anymore right I, I was right I was burnt. So I called my friend Brian that uh, uh, I worked with at the Ford dealership, and he had known what was going on. I said, yeah. Brian, it's time. If you want to get out, I'm giving you a chance to jump in on this. Hmm. And uh, he goes, man, I, I, I've been wanting out of this for a long time. <laughs> so I said, I'll make you a deal. I will make you partners if you come to work with me. Yeah. And everybody I knew told me I was a complete idiot for mm. doing that. Rick, that's your business. You're growing it. Well, at that time, it was pretty small. What yeah. was it? Yeah. You know? Well, we grew uh, to the point where uh, Brian and I couldn't keep up. He brought his son in, and, and we trained him. He did this work, that work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we trained him, and uh, we outgrew that small shop that we were in. Okay. And uh, we found the shop that we're currently in that was way too big, and and uh, but it was affordable. Huh. And the guy uh, just wanted to get rid of it, and it was in pretty bad shape. So uh, we used half the shop, and and we opened it up, and and uh, started going. And pretty soon we got so busy that we couldn't handle the work ourselves anymore. And so we went to another good friend of mine, John, yeah. and we went to John and, and I made him the same deal. Now he was tougher to convince <laughs> because his wife is very, um, apprehensive about this is my life, you know, yeah. and I get it. Right. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, you've been I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not being, uh, critical of her and she was right to say, uh, I know you guys, I don't know if you can do this. <laughs> so, so, uh, we had to take her out for dinner and a few drinks later, she <laughs> said, all right, I like your business plan. Uh, I, I think we're in. So John and, and Donna made that decision that they were going to commit and I made John the same deal. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do guys. And we did it all through lawyer and, and then we incorporated, uh, I will give you one third share of Grumpy's Diesel. I will be president, you will be uh, vice president, you'll be treasurer, and you will own one third of this business, but you have to stay there for eight years to get your, um, your total shares. Because one, I knew I couldn't do it myself. Mm -hmm. It was already proven that I couldn't. Yeah. I wasn't smart enough. Uh, uh, I didn't have the, uh, the uh, tenacity, whatever you want to call it. But I knew I couldn't do it myself. And where are you going to get good trained people that are as invested as you are yeah. unless they own part of the business? So I gave them those uh, one third ownership, but they had to be there for eight years to get their full uh, investment in the company, which they both have. Uh, we are all three equal partners. Yes, I am the founding member. Um, and they let me run a little bit, you know, uh, <laughs> they understand, uh, I'm, you know, whatever, but, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, uh, nine years later, um, you know, uh, as far as numbers, um, we're doing anywhere from 1.5 million to 1.8 this year, maybe. Yeah. And we've done that consistently for probably the last five years. That's, that's amazing. That's, yeah. that's quite a story. It, 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 uh, when I say it, I say it with ease because I've lived it, but at the same time, it's like, you did what? 
Yeah. One point five million dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And then I look and go, there's nothing here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but there is. There there is. Honestly, there is. Uh we're making improvements. We we bought the building. Right. Uh it's not paid for, but we bought the building. Okay. Uh we've made all uh sorts of improvements, uh some visual, some not. And the cool thing is we never borrowed a dime. Really? Started with my $2,500. We have never taken a loan. We have never uh, had outside money. We have always self-sustained. Now, I'm not, I'm going to tell you this, that there was a few times, how in the heck am I going to make payroll? Yeah. Um, I'd have to call up a vendor and say, hey, I've got 90% of it. Can I pay you next week? And my vendors were very understanding. When, when you're buying, and this is, this is funny, um, we buy our parts through the dealership that I started with. <laughs> so when you're uh, buying $400,000 in parts from them, they tend to like you a lot. Yeah. So uh, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to tell you that this is how we got to where we're at. Right. Uh, um, I, I, I'm, I, I guess I'm proud of it. Uh, that you, you know, should be, my um, gosh. But uh, yeah, I, I'm. So what's what's been what's been some of the biggest lessons? I mean, there's school of hard knocks. Mm. There's what's been some of those things that you've learned? Well, I've already hit on one of them. You can't do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, on on this scale, now I know some people can, mm -hmm. but you will pay for it. Um, you need help and, and good help and dedicated help, whether that be, um, I've got to pay Lance for my advertising mm -hmm. or I've got to pay an accountant to make sure I'm legal Yeah, or I trust John and Brian with anything I own. And that has been the biggest thing that I can go on vacation and my, my two buddies got it. Yeah. They, 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 they will take care of it. Now they laugh at me because I call back and I, how's it going? <laughs> How much money did you make the deposit? And they laugh at me, Rick, we got this. Yeah, I know they do. I, deep down, I know they got it, but, but that's the biggest thing. The other thing is, uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have to be the cheapest guy in town. We yeah. aren't, we're in by far not the cheapest guy in town, but we use quality parts. Uh, we do the job, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we try to do it right, uh, yeah. as best as we can. And you don't have to take every job that comes in the door. We have politely and sometimes not politely said, no, nope, you're not our customer. And the reason hmm. why is because this guy wants to bring his own parts. He wants to buy his parts from a discount auto parts outlet. Yeah. Um, we, we want to control the parts that go into your vehicle. So when you go on vacation and you call me and say, hey, I broke down that alternator you put on went bad. And well, you forgot that uh, you provided that alternator. Oh, yeah. Well, what do I do now? I, 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 yeah. I don't want to be, uh, we, we tried that, um, can't do it. Um, that's the biggest thing that I've learned, uh, is, uh, uh, the people that you work with, mm -hmm. uh, you got to trust them. Um, um, three minds are better than one. It can also hurt you. Okay. I want to paint that wall gray. Well, I don't really like gray. I like blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was kind of thinking red. Well, now we got three guys wanting to paint a wall a different color. I'm making it up, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to uh, paint a color and we argue with each other and, and there's been uh, fights, you know, and, and we have to walk away from each other. Um, and there's been times, man, I just, I, I just want to go work for somebody, but I can't mm -hmm. do that. Not yeah. anymore. Yeah. It's it's really neat to hear how it's worked the dynamics a little bit of how it's worked with Brian and John, 
Well, they're because... special people. I'm sorry to uh, interrupt you, but they're special people. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, I didn't pick just the guy I hung out with. Right. John is a thinker. He's uh, uh, a little bit apprehensive to mm -hmm. do something. He he studies all the stuff, and sometimes it's like John, just make a decision. No, no, we got to think about this, and he's right. And then Brian is a little bit different. Well, you know, let's just do this. And then there's me jump in with both feet and take prisoners and we'll figure <laughs> it out later. Well, they, they, these two guys, not only are they my friends, but they help me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. They, they are uh, what I'm not. And, and honestly, it sounds crazy now, but I knew that back then. Yeah. I, we were friends at the dealership and I knew that they had three different ways of looking at a vehicle and we'd all come to the same conclusion on hmm. a vehicle. I, I, I knew we could work together. Yeah. Well, I, I guess what came to mind was uh, recently I was talking to another business owner who to get people into the business, mm -hmm. highly skilled technicians mm -hmm. had uh, given away mm -hmm. parts of the business. Yep. And now they're now they're in a tight spot. Yep. Because other people in the business want to go different directions. They, right. they, they say, no, business is better ran this way. And we're like, I understand no. that. So so that's that's I understand that. Even my lawyer advised me against it. Yeah. When we were doing everything. And I said, no, we do have a common goal. And, and, uh, uh, I think we can work out our issues. Like I said, there's been days that, uh, something got thrown across the room <laughs> and he had to go to his side of the shop and I had to go to my side of the shop, but, at, and, and, and they're still my friends Yeah. and I still trust them with anything I have. Yeah. So, um, that was set into motion well before we were business partners. Hmm. Wow. Um, so going from, now I know it's been a long time, yep. going from 15 to 20,000 a month to, you know, 1.5 to 1.8 million a year, mm -hmm. what's been some of the keys to growth? I mean, for, for some people, they, they pump it into the advertising. Yep. Some people don't, but right. still grow. Right. Okay. We've, you, we've tried a bunch of stuff. Um, and luckily the other places that I worked at, I was, um, I studied, uh, I worked at a tune up shop and I knew the owner and, and he says, you know what? You advertise, you advertise, you advertise. And when you think you had enough, double it. Well, we didn't have that kind of budget, but I've taken, um, TV ads mm -hmm. and we got lucky enough to, get hooked up with a woman that worked at WEAR mm -hmm. and she liked us. Yeah. And, um, we had an ad go off during the Indy 500. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Every mechanic in town was watching that. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it was, I, I Every have truck owner. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. so, so we've done that. We tried radio, uh, with <clears throat> little success. Um, I, I printed out flyers with mm -hmm. no success. <laughs> um, we dabbled in Facebook. Uh, you can live and die by Facebook. Yeah. Um, it will kill you as fast as you grow if you don't manage it right. And, uh, we did a little of both. Um, you have helped us a lot, but the biggest thing is a happy customer you know, um, it took too long. It cost too much. Is your truck fixed? Yep. Have you had any problems since? Not really. Tell somebody. Hmm. So, um, it helps also that we're in a niche market yeah. that, that, uh, how many places in town are there? And do you want it done legally or mm -hmm. do you want it done in somebody's backyard? Okay. Um, we, we've tried all, uh, you know, uh, we tried some sponsorship things at the racetrack. Yeah. 
didn't help a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think it would, but I'm connected to drag racing, so let's give it a try. And it, it just didn't, it didn't help yeah. much. Um, honestly, and, and this is no smoke blown, but I think you've got us more viewers than, and, and fans than we did on our own. Uh, honestly, yeah. you know, well, thank you. And that's not what this was I know, about. I know, I know, I know, I know. And I didn't want to sound the wrong way, but, but, um, you know, it, it, we, we stumbled in a bunch of things. One, we were on Highway 29, extremely yeah. visible. Oh, yeah. Two, we work on stuff that other mechanics don't want to work on. Yeah. And three, we can get them fixed. Yeah. So it, it, um, it worked. Yeah. That uh, um, dumb luck. Yeah. Some planning mm -hmm. and and uh, some word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. all it all added. Now up. I I won't deny that there has been some merit to taking the stories of the problems that y'all been able to solve mm -hmm. to video. Yep. And using Facebook advertising. Yeah, that. I like it. So because that's that's essentially what people want to know. Can you solve my problem? Sure, I can so, tell you how to so, fix it. So every video that we make with y'all is all about, there was this problem, mm -hmm. this is how we solved it. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we talk about with your videos that yep. we make. Yep, yep. And uh, at first, when we started doing them, I was scared that, well, they're just going to take with what I tell them and do it at home. Yeah. Well, some people are going to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can't tell you how to fix your truck. Yeah. You know, I could walk you through it and you'd never know what you did right. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I can give you some confidence and I know what I'm talking about, right? Maybe you'll see the value and I know mm -hmm. the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he's got four star <laughs> review. Um, I'll, I'll give him a chance, yeah. you know, um, it works. So if you could, um, here you are nine years later, mm -hmm. looking back at nine years ago, Rick, what would you tell him? Say, hey, dummy, don't do this. Or you need to do this and you'll get there faster. What do you think you would tell him? Mm, I, I would warn me of competition, calling you and spreading lies. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they're doing oh construction gosh. work up there and, 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 uh, uh, the competition, um, uh, uh, got uh, called the city on us. It was frivolous. I, I, I wow. was notified by lawyers, uh, not to use the Ford logo in my advertising because somebody at the Ford place didn't like that we were working on their trucks, hmm. their trucks. Um, I would, um, I would warn me of all those things and I'd still tell me do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know about all the stuff. I didn't know about, um, burglaries. I didn't know about, uh, vandalisms. I didn't know about, uh, petty neighbors. I didn't know about, um, you know, how hard it was going to be to get somebody to do landscaping for me hmm. or how to deal with, um, and, and it turned out great. ECUA was wonderful to us, uh, for moving a fire hydrant. I, I, I but how, how do I know to talk to the, the right people? Yeah. How do you get things done? And, that is probably the biggest thing I've learned in the last nine years is how do you get something done? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, talk to the police because a guy lost control and flipped his vehicle into our parking lot on a Sunday morning. Uh, how? I had wow. no idea something like that was going to be <laughs> in a business owner. We, we had a vehicle stolen off of our lot because uh, uh, a guy dropped his vehicle off. Um, uh, uh, after hours and these two 
thugs uh, popped the doors, uh, forced the ignition, stole an ATM machine, got in a high-speed chase with the cops. <laughs> wow. How, 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 how do you train for that? You know, how, how do you look at a Goodness customer and gracious. go, Lance, um, thank you for trusting me with your vehicle, but guess what? It's, uh, this Somebody has happened stole to it. it. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. how, how, you know, the, 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 uh, I've had a, a negative review on Facebook because a guy's, uh, uh, gasoline powered truck broke down the block from my shop and, he wanted me to send somebody out to help him fix it on the side of the road. Sir, I can't do that. I, and, and why not? You, you don't care about me. No, sir. It's not that, that if I step off this lot and, and somebody gets hurt, I could be sued and I could lose everything I have. I've had to learn how to deal with those situations. Wow. Would I tell myself to do anything different? No, I just had to learn them. Yeah. You know, it, it amazes me every single day uh, what's going to happen next. Well, I like what some folks have said, that everything is figure outable. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Everything's figure outable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, you could, tell your, you could tell your early self that, you know, these things are going to happen. You won't believe it. You won't believe it, but it's almost like it's almost better if you don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if if I told you that that somebody <clears throat> was going to pull up in the middle of the parking lot and pull their pants down and, <laughs> and, and go, and, you know, I, I'd say you're nuts. But it happened and we got it on, on a security. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, things happen. Wow. Uh, we, wow. I, I just, it, it's a crazy life, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, I'll have something to... Uh, I say this all the time when I'm 80 or 85 and, and, and the kids are all around and going, uh, Hey, granddad, uh, tell me a story. <laughs> You've I, got a few. <laughs> I've got ammunition for that. Uh, so how do people find out more about Grumpy's Diesel? Easy. Uh, we got a website. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on Facebook. Right. Uh, Google the name. Uh, YouTube. Um, I'm not going to give you my cell number. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, or, or, uh, stop by the shop. Right. Uh, we, we've had that happen. Who's grumpy? Um, well, and everybody raises their hand. Yeah. Everybody yeah. points at Holly. And I just said it. I, yeah. I just said it today. I said, uh, you asked me the wrong question. It'll be me. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but it, it's all in fun. Um, right. easy to find. Uh, yeah. we're, we're there. Great. I appreciate it, Rick. Thank you Thank for your you. time. Thank you very much.